Imagine a world where computers and their screens fold into your pocket. A world where flexible processors slide under your skin, providing vital information in case of chronic illness. This miniaturization is the result of a long quest tackling the problem of the overheating of components. In fact, the smaller a device is, the more it heats. One of the first computers in history was 30 meters long and weighed 30 tons. Your smartphone is 23,000 times faster than the computer on board the Apollo missions to the moon. It's essential to find thinner semiconducting materials to reduce this overheating. Molybdenite is a very promising material that may be the solution to building the microprocessors of the future. On se trouve ici en Valais. Here we are in Valais, in the heights of the Nonda Valley, above Lake Clauson. We are here simply because beneath our feet there is molybdenite. Here we have a really nice sample of molybdenite, this little rosette with its shiny metallic surface. It's barely visible to the naked eye. You need a magnifying glass to observe it. But beneath our feet is a tiny mine of molybdenite. We can manufacture very thin layers of this material by using a very simple mechanical process. Adhesive tape is applied to the surface of the crystal, pulled off and transferred to a substrate. This is used to make a transistor, which uses very little energy. We can use a method to manufacture very thin layers of this semiconductor in a quartz tube. We heat the oven to a very high temperature so that the chemical constituents evaporate and our semiconductor layer will be deposited. With this process, we can produce a very thin layer of this semiconductor with a thickness of slightly less than a nanometer. A nanometer is more or less a hundred thousand times thinner than a human hair. This tool here is an atomic force microscope. It's basically a microscope like the normal optical microscope to take images from small objects. Just the difference here is that using this microscope, we can take images from objects as small as atoms. This microscope is very powerful. It can show the difference of the height between the one layer, two layer, and three layer flakes. Basically, this is the tool that's going to enable us to, to characterize the material and the devices for the next generation of electronics. Thanks to the research of Professor Kish, we can not only reduce the size of computers, but also create flexible processors, which will be integrated into all sorts of areas beyond the scope of what we can achieve today.